Hey guys, what's happening? So, I want to show you my uh, power supply modification to alleviate this. And you can see that burnt SATA connector is on these PCI risers. And what's interesting here is not, not every single GPU is the same. Uh, I've noticed that these 5700 XTs pull a lot of wire, like a lot of power at the riser. So from the PCI bus, they pull a lot of power. Way more than the NVIDIA cards. So that's a 3070, 30, 1660 Supers. Yeah, these things pull a lot and they burned a lot of connectors. So I've already actually had a remedy to this issue with my uh, 1200 watt Corsair. I made custom cables for this specific reason. Um, but on this one, let me show you, follow along the video and I'll show you how, what I did to modify and make it more reliable and safer. Yeah, I just don't think this power supply is strong enough to be able to handle this, but I mean, I've always done this in the past. Um, but these SATA connectors aren't really good for powering the uh, risers. And I actually have two on each cable. This is actually a 1000 watt power supply. And what's funny is I didn't actually have this issue with burning on my NVIDIA cards, like 1660 Supers, on my uh, 3070. Uh, for some reason, these AMD Red Devils, the 5700 XTs and the Sapphires draw a lot more power from the, the riser. So, I mean, to get a power supply in this range is pretty expensive. Um, like, I think I originally paid like $100 for this one on Amazon. It's a thousand watt power supply. Aptivia, but I actually, I'm burning the connectors and even this feels hot. I mean, I tried to move, distribute the load a little bit, but, but the problem is, you're, you're trying to put a lot of wattage over this yellow one, single yellow wire which is not big enough to be able to handle the waters you're pulling through. But when you're actually splitting between multiples, I mean, I can feel the wires pot. So, um, yeah, I already fixed this right here. I, I cut this part off and I soldered the two pieces together. So what I might do is I have a lot of extra cables down here. You know, I keep my power supply stuff. Um, so what I might do is I might take the power supply apart and I'm gonna solder on directly to the board I'm going to remove all these older older style like SATA and Molex connectors and I'm just going to solder on some 6 pins or 8 pins with the 6 plus 2 connectors to the, right to the power supply on the board. So if you're not familiar with electronics or you're nervous, don't do this. <laughs> I just don't have to spend another, like $150, $200 for a better like uh, modular power supply. So, alright, uh, get it going. I take the whole, I take my mining rig down, pull the power supply out. Pull the power supply apart and uh, get it going. A little more insight why you'd want to do this conversion. Um, see there, right there, there's three yellow wires. Well, you're distributing the load amongst three wires versus one. So if you see this, the typical SATA connector conversion, you're going from two wires down to one wire. So, like I said, I didn't have this issue with NVIDIA. So the MD cards just pull a lot more wattage to the riser. So. And if you're wondering what I uh, what this mining rig is, that's my 3D printed mining rig. So the motherboard off there. With the power supply. Yeah, it's hundred percent 3D printed. Alright, um so I gotta pull that power supply out. I mean obviously doing this is gonna avoid the warranty. Alright, so yeah, but I've already kind of burnt the cable up, so that's the thing that's already gone. Plus I've already had this for a while, so it'd be a headache to return it. Like it would take me more time dealing with trying to return it than just buying a new one. So on a power supply, you typically will have uh, three different rails. You have 3.3 volt, 5 volt, and 12 volt. So red volt is usually 5 volt, uh, yellow is 12 volt, and the black is obviously the ground. Um, then you have a couple other things for the 24 pin ATX connector, but I'm mainly concerned about the 12 volt rail and removing stuff I don't use on these rails. So I might have enough yellow wires coming off this motherboard so I don't have to take it off and desolder it all. So I'm going to have to take this off. So I don't have to actually go to the back of the motherboard. So we'll see. I'm going to make sure that I have enough before I, uh, you know, because I'm going to be removing a lot of Molex connectors and, uh, what's it called, Molex and SATA connectors. Okay, so on this side, everything I'm keeping and this is everything I'm removing. So what I'm removing is um, 12 volt ground, 5 volt. I think the orange is the 3.3 negative. I can't remember the uh, well actually it says right there. 
Actually, not even recommend. If you're not familiar with electronics, make sure you decharge caps. It's like, I don't know if I should recommend this mod to people or not. Just That's a really large cap and it can actually hurt if you hit with it. So, make sure you decharge it, you know, just short the two leads. I already saw a spark already, so. Should be decharged. I needed to get back to here so I can unsolder the wires out of the back here. Fire up my uh, hacko. Pull those wires out. So yeah, it's just a mess of wires and bundles. It's not like nothing special. Like I said, the point here is to distribute the load amongst more wires. All right, so a lot of these factories, they use like this high melt solder, which is really hard to get with a soldering iron. So usually what I do is I might put some of the low melt solder on there, and that actually helps heat up the actual area so I can pull out the wires. Um, just the soldering iron doesn't have enough power to heat this up. You know, it has to draw a lot of power, so. Interesting. So at the factory, they use like this little ferrule thing, which then locks onto the PCB, so they can probably run it onto the soldering machine. Yeah, it probably saves a lot of time. You just crimp the three wires together, snap it in, run it through the soldering machine. All right, so I have the unnecessary stuff removed. It's going to give me holes here. So I'm mainly concerned about this 12 volt railer here. So I have plenty of spots there, and then the ground here. So I'm just doing ground and, and, and 12 volt. All right, so I'm going to cut these Molox connectors off. Um, actually, I do keep these connectors. They're kind of hard to find. I can't get them in my local electronics store. So in case I ever got to repin something, like I created custom wires for my Corsair power supplies um, that were actually heavier gauge wires, so I wouldn't have that problem. All right, together. So what I want to do is I want to have each lead have its own solder point to the motherboard. So I'm going to solder this on there. I have some shrink wrap that I'm going to push up when I'm done. All right, there we are. Wires in. I'm going to put it back again there, put it around. Back the way it was. Alright, take a look. Cut the wires in. So before I even actually put this thing back 100% back together, I'm going to put my power supply tester on it. Alright, let's see if this thing works. Hopefully it doesn't pop on me. <laughs> Alright, all the rails look good. Alright, looking good, looking good. Right, it's all back together, so now you can see they're daisy chained together. So instead of actually one wire, I'm going to three wires. Straight to the actual, uh, obviously the, the board here of the power spine. Alright, let's try this back, see if it works. Yeah, what's that, about four or five thousand dollars worth of cards? That's not what I paid for, I actually paid four hundred dollars per card before they were scalped. Um, but then I saw these things go up to like fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. All right, guys, mining away here. Awesome. All right, guys. Uh, so you're for a little. <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't recommend this for everybody, but you saw how basic it is, you know. But like I said, you if you don't know how to do this, you could burn your house down or fire risk or whatever. But uh, all right, guys, cool.